Royalty. Welcome back to Mushoku Tensai Jobless Incarnation Anime Review Episode number 22. This one reviewing the, the opening episode, the official opening episode of Season 2 of the show. Which is called The Broken Hearted Mage. And for the official episode count for the series is episode 25. This episode adapts from the prelude of Book 7, Chapter 1, and goes through most of Chapter 2. It stops about a little over halfway through the book. Halfway the chapter. So we start off, basically, we see Rudius, and we see we see a few new characters. Sarah, and... Um, what was the other one's name? I was thinking it was S as well. Let's see. It is Sarah... And Suzanne. Yes. We also see Timothy, Patras, and Memer. Yeah, basically this episode is the debut of the party known as Counter Arrow. Sarah becomes an important character in the book, basically, that they're adapting from. Because, after the book that she appears in, she is not returning to book 14. Yes. And there is stuff that happens in book 7, that hopefully they get to the anime... That caused her to disappear for several bo- that saw her disappear for a long period of time. So basically, we have Rudius going to the north. By the way, wearing the same exact outfit. Well, I think the only change he made to his attire between seasons is that his shirt is different. Yeah, he's still wearing the shorts he's wearing since the last season of the show. Still wearing the same coat that he wore last season, but the shirt has changed. And we saw him sighing a lot, which is new to the anime. That was actually new because, like, he he's, he looks very depressed. In the anime, he sighed a lot. And, of course, basically, he reveals the reason why he's there. He's looking for his mother. He does not say her name, per se, but he's looking for her mother. He disappeared in the mass teleportation incident. And then, of course, they arrive at their town, which is called... What is the name of the town they arrive in? It's a town in the northern area. It's So, they arrive there, and then, of course, basically, they agree their own thing. Of course, he goes to an inn, and he requests to stay there for a month. He drops him out a coin, and the innkeeper's shocked how much he's giving him. He goes to his room, and by the way, his room has got this weird-looking glass. It looks like it's made of, it has looked like the middle of it looks like it's made of lots of cups surrounded by other stuff. And he closes it, he sleeps, and the guy's very mopey. Why is he mopey, you might ask? Because of what happened at the end of the last season of the show when Eris left him. She left him right after they had sex. Yep, and this becomes a plot point for him for the next few books. It gets wrapped up by book nine. Basically, it started at the end of book six, and it gets wrapped up by book nine. Yeah. So he's very mopey, and of course he needs money to look for his mother, so he takes the most dangerous quest. Now, they don't say what these quests are, because they don't translate them in the anime for some reason. So he takes a quest, and we don't see what it is. In the, in the book, basically, he looks for grizzlies, these, uh, lot, lot, this, this is grizzlies, so... Counter Arrow agrees to go with him on this quest. He introduces himself, and of course, everybody introduces themselves, where... Suzanne is the sub leader of the group. We have Sarah, who's the archer. Timothy, who's the leader. There's also Mirimir. He is the healer, who's got green hair, like, of course, Zephyrite. Uh, Patrick, who's the, who's the mage, who's a warrior. He looks a lot like, um, appearance-wise, he reminds me of, of, um, Stronoff. He reminds me of Gaz Stronoff from Overlord. Yeah. So you're thinking, wait... So we're copying each other? Yeah, and also for strange reasons, there's a character in that series who looks exactly like Roxy, and this is part the party she's part of, and the leader looks exactly like an older version of Rudius. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Sarah is the archer, Timothy is the leader of the party. And, and if I write, apparently these two are married, Suzanne and Timothy. They don't say in the anime, but they do. Yeah, so they basically go out, and of course they count. They kind of they 
to have camp, and then of course they plan their strategy. Bruyus tries to volunteer to do more stuff, but he just did him just to stay aside, kid. And then of course at one point he does do what he's told to do. Then of course he's like very hesitant. He by the way when he, when he first has arrived, uh, by the way I forgot to mention this. They do keep this in the book. When he arrives in the town, he goes to virtual go far before he goes in, and he requests his party be disbanded. Now they don't say it's dead end, but yeah, it's dead end party. Because the the member is basically going in separate ways, so just disband the party. He was hesitant at first, and the party is disbanded. Yep. Yeah, they don't say it for some reason. Even the book, it's clearly the dead end party. I'm not sure why in the world they're cutting stuff out like this for. It's like, like it's tiny bits of important dialogue they should keep in. <coughs> for some reason, they don't. I'm not sure why. Like, unless you read the books, basically, you probably won't have any idea what the heck is going on here. Like, you could say it's probably dead end, that he's expanding. Like, if you just go from the end perspective, that's probably what's happening here. Given the fact that in the previous season, the group disbanded, because they all went to separate ways. Eris went off to do her own thing, and she's not sitting into a book, I thought it was to be book 16, during the series return book 15. Uh, Roger actually returns fairly quickly. He returns book 10. Yeah, he, he's only gone for about four books, while Eris has gone for about nine. But don't worry, they get reunited, and I won't get into exactly of how the reunion happens, but yeah, it, the, and the reason why she's separated from him, excuse me, because she's training for a rematch with, with uh, Orsar, which I'll, that's something they may or may not get to in the, uh, they might get to that next season, it is possible. But I have heard that this season has confirmed for two cores. That it's going to start this month. And I think it's going to wrap up by September. And then for some strange reason, we're going to take a seven-month hiatus. And then resume in April. And then basically continue to like June. Yeah, I'm not sure why this seven-month hiatus for. Yeah, I saw like, really? Seven months? Okay, I'm glad the fact it's two cores. So I'm thinking that this half will cover books 7, 8, and 9. I have heard that the reception to our books 8 and 9, I've heard the university stuff, most of it, so some, it didn't receive a good reception. I thoroughly enjoyed reading these books. <coughs> Me. Because it's important to the story. And I'm glad they're adapting them. Now, it has been... Now, I kind of thought this. It's been kind... It didn't, it, I don't think the studio has downright stated it. That they're going to adapt books. I mean, Seven definitely. Because they adapted this episode. They started adapting this episode. Uh, the one thing that's not been confirmed yet for this season is we're going to book 12. That part has not been confirmed. They do confirm that the University arc is going to be adapted. And possibly the Labyrinth arc. The Labyrinth arc takes up books 10 and... Uh, well, mostly 10 and 11. So, it is presumed we may go to book 11. Who knows? It just depends upon where the studio goes to. And I do think, basically, book 9 is a good way to end the first half of the season. I've read the books, and book 12 does seem a good ending point for, basically, the end of the season. I kind of figured this when I read the books, and since I heard about season 2, and I figured this would be perfect for the end of the season, and... I'm going to prove to be. I'm probably going to prove to be correct about this. So, of course, he's moping, and of course, he takes out a piece of. He takes him out of his bag, and it's Eris's hair. And I should point out, though, this episode's the only time you're going to see that, because what happens in the episode kids. So, they go crown of the Grizzlies, and of course, he unleashes fire. Now, here's the thing: in the book, they've heard it was Quat. They've heard it. They've heard it. They use the name Quagmire. Which is actually his nickname in the books. In the anime, they don't mention his nickname for some reason. Yeah, that's something quite weird. It's like they, they cut up the nickname for some strange reason. Maybe they might include it in the dub. Because I've seen it where the sub cuts it out, but the, the dub puts it back in. Which I do appreciate dubs doing that. Now, do I think they might do that? I'm not sure. It, it depends upon when Crunchyroll dubs, because it's on Crunchyroll now. Yes, Crunchyroll has the dub for the season itself. Because I think I watched the entire first season on, on Crunchyroll, I believe it was. Yeah, Crunchyroll. And now I'm watching it here on first season 2 on Crunchyroll. Now, 
this is going to be the first full season of the series I've watched because, well, how should I put this? Because when I started watching the series, uh, I think it was about a couple years ago I watched this one, where I had covered the first half of the season, which already aired, and this actually was a series that was recommended. It was like you suggested to me by Anime News, and good suggestion. I love the series. As a matter of fact, I've been buying the books uh, physically since book 10. And, well, actually, I bought book 11. I was going to buy book 10. Book 10 was available, so I bought book 10 later on. But I own uh, from books 10 to 22 for the series. Yes, I own 13 volumes of the series. I do not own the first nine. I've read, I've read all the books so far. I am rereading them for these reviews. So, do I think the anime follows the book? Mostly. I mean, yeah, there's some small important bits to cutting out which I'm not happy with. But they're keeping a lot of stuff in, which I do appreciate the anime doing that. So, after they deal with the... They, he unleashes his his little fireball, which he doesn't say in the anime the name of it. Which, well, you see, it's mentioned in the anime and the book. They can do uh, wordless incantations, which is true. He can do that. So, my guess is probably the reason why they cut it out, because... He may say the word in the book, but uh, doesn't need an anime. And he uses a staff that usually keeps covered up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, also when he's walking in the snow, he does see an illusion of Eris and and Guildhart. Uh, uh, Gothy, I think her name is. The one who is basically knows Paul really well. A, a very mature woman who is very beautiful. And it's impl- it was implied that Paul may have actually slept with her. Yes, it's very implied, but it's never been proven in the books. Yeah. So, they go deal with the Grizzlies. At one point, they have the Grizzlies. Uh, they look like black Grizzlies. And they added this to the anime, which, yeah, which the book did not mention at all. This was completely meant for the anime, where they show up these black Grizzlies, and they're covered in mud. And it was Rudy as a pointing this out. Which, yeah, makes total sense. Yeah, it's like basically when I was watching as I'm reading the book, I'm like, yeah, the Black Grizzly thing, but I think the whole line of basically them covered in mud, that makes total sense. And eventually, of course, Rudy deals with the rest of them, and then, of course, they skin them. We also see Rudy's hand get partially burned. Now, do I think he might be sporting gloves at some point? Possibly, I don't know. So, he shakes their hands. At first, he just shakes their hand at first. Because he's very nervous. And after basically the mission, he does shake your hands. And then they go back to town where they deliver the stuff. And of course, they call them outsiders because they're not from the area. And so the leader of the party declares, oh yeah, first round's on us. Because we basically got this big haul. And then we have Rudius go back to his room after all this. After all the celebrating. And then he takes, he sits in front of his fireplace in his room. He takes the locket of Eris' hair. And he throws in the fire. Yep. And if you're curious what happened next right afterwards, it's a point of view of Sarah. Yes, they ended this roughly a little over halfway through book chapter two. Yes. Do I think it might adapt the next episode? I don't know. Um, I do know the name of the next next episode of the series. It's called Force in the Dead of Night. This should be interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to this particular episode. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Now, I've also been reading the the manga for the series. The furthest I've gotten with the manga is up to book uh, chapter 76, which I think the manga I got to, they just finished adapting book 9. Yes, out of 22 books. (coughs) Actually, Actually, like 22, excuse me. Because... In Japan, the book series is over. Yeah, it's been concluded for a while now. And here we have about four more books that have been released. The next book, book 23, is scheduled to be released next month. Now, am I planning on reviewing the books? No. I have no media plans for the book. Now, I am enjoying. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm glad I get a chance to be in the season for this one. I mean, if you think about it, how many, like, new seasons of, a, of an anime based on my light novel I have ever reviewed. Not many. You have Overlord, you know, my smartphone, ReZero, 
this is probably like the fourth one I come across where I view, I view a brand new season for the series from start to finish. Well, you could say, then, well, what about, uh, well, what about, how should I put this? But what about Rush in the World? Drugstore in the World? Drugs in the World, that was a brand new series, along with Banished and Hero Party. I actually caught up with that one. I wasn't watching when it started. And kind of the same thing with Skeleton in the World. I was watching when it started. Now, like, a brand new season of the series already, uh, basically, it's airing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it have been some I watched from the start of it, but not all of it. So, yeah, that's it for the tickle review. And definitely looking forward to reviewing this from this point forward until this, season's been, this first half of the season has been concluded on Mondays, which proves to be a very good idea because it's based on a light novel, and light novel takes a while for me to look a little, little do, it takes me a while to do research for this one. It takes me about an hour because basically reading a lot of like words to look at pictures. There's a lot of words when it comes to light novels than it comes to an anime. Well, based on a manga. Okay, so that's it for you. Next up we have two comic corners and it's back Doctor Who and am I gonna watch the one I was going to watch? No, I'm actually watching that one right now. I might review that one first. I might review that the other one probably tomorrow. Okay, next video. Bye.